Okay, I had to have Chris join me. She had to. I did, I did. So this is carrot cake. And um, I think this is my third attempt. So let me know what you think. Keep trying, I always say. <laughs>
And some people, I've heard grate their carrot and it's a finer specks of carrot within your cake. So it's the finer part of your, unless you use a food processor too. I don't know why I often do this by hand because I do have a food processor. Sometimes I think for me, it's the process of climbing up my step stool, getting the food processor, food processor out. And I don't know, I think I have to find a, a newer food processor, maybe lighter, but still does the job. Anyway, that's, I'm gabbing, sorry about that. Um, but I didn't do this. I really like little specks of carrot, but I decided to do the thicker shredded carrot. So I'm hoping that will work. This is three cups of that. I might decrease it to maybe about two cups if I think it's too much carrot. Because, you know, when you, I think when you're making a cake, you don't want too much of the extra stuff because the cake won't have enough to hold itself together and then layering it with the frosting and everything. So anyway, I've got three cups here. I might decrease it to about two. Um, I have a, uh, about a half a cup of golden raisins. You can use the darker raisins too, but I think golden raisins are just as sweet and it has a little bit more subtlety in the color. And then a lot of warm spices. Oh, I just love the smell of this. So I have nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger. What else do I have? I'm looking on my little note, my little cheat sheet, I guess you could call it. So yeah, I have ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon. If you want a different warm spice, it could be just a hint of cloves or, I wouldn't necessarily say all spice. Um, what else is there? Nutmeg, cloves, cinnamon, ginger. I think I'm missing something, but I can't think of it. Anyway, I have ginger, nutmeg, and cinnamon in here. About two tablespoons of cinnamon, but a half a tablespoon of ginger because I didn't want the ginger to overpower it. And I think ginger and carrots really work well together. And I have about maybe about a quarter, if not a little bit more of nutmeg, freshly grated nutmeg. So anyway, then I've got some buttermilk here if I didn't leave that out long enough, prepping everything. And then what else do I have? About two and a half cups of flour. Oops, I forgot a little salt. I have two teaspoons of baking soda, half a cup of butter, a half a cup of oil right here, three eggs, and then um, you can do two cups of sugar, I believe. I think white sugar will probably make your cake a little bit more, uh, a little bit more sweeter. I chose to go one cup of brown sugar and one cup of uh, regular sugar white granulated sugar. So we'll see how this all comes out, people. Tighten that thing up. So let's get going and cream our butter. In fact, I forgot my paddle thing. And in the meantime, I'll bring out my little spatula here. I know it's such a nice day outside. Normally I'd go out there and catch a little rays because it has been unusually warm, sunny, gorgeous in the Pacific Northwest or the Portland area um, for April. Um, the high 50s, low 60s are coming back for a little bit. Anyway, let's get going. We're gonna cream the butter. Give that, you know, a little bit of, uh, a little bit of time there. Then we're gonna add in the sugar the eggs, I believe the oil, and then the vanilla. Yes, that's what we're gonna do. I wanted to make sure. There's not much butter here, so it's not gonna take that long. But I'm gonna break up the sugar a little bit. Just so the mixer doesn't have to work so hard to break it up. I'm 
Okay, here we go. I really don't know why because I'm using the regular beater thing in my mixer. Some spilled. But it always drips around like this. And I don't know if something got loose because I have not had this mixer for very long. I'm like, what is going on? Okay, I'm just gonna scrape down the bottom just to make sure the butter and the sugar It's all incorporated. One of these days, I'm gonna get myself a glass bowl because I think the metal, depending on what you have in it or whatever, it kind of either warms up or stays too cold and you're supposed to have everything at room temperature. Whoa. So here we go. The butter and the sugar are doing their thing. I'm gonna turn this down just a tad and add a room temperature egg one at a time. Oh yeah, I forgot. I should really do this in a little dish. Here, hang on. I like the clear one. Just in case if I do any, get any shells in it, or in my opinion, sometimes the egg doesn't look great. One more. Whoops. Well, we definitely don't want the whole shell to be in it. There we go. I'm gonna just turn this up one more little notch just to make it all nice and fluffy with the butter, the sugar, and the egg. I mean, who doesn't like to bake? I definitely get intimidated by baking, but um, I will never give up, never. I'm just gonna make sure that things from the side of the bowl are also mixed in. Give that a few more minutes before I add in the oil and the vanilla. Yeah. Hmm. See, I think it's looking good, if you can see it. Yeah, I think it's looking good. Because even though the carrots may feel dry, they do, will have a little bit of moisture too. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a half a cup of oil. Slowly just drizzle it in. Aren't these kind of cute? Look at that. I kind of love fun, fun kitchen accessories especially if they're colorful and have at least a little handle on it. I think it got oil all over my hands. And then I think, what, a teaspoon of vanilla? What do I have here? Yeah, two teaspoons of vanilla or a teaspoon. I'm gonna add in two. I mean, baking vanilla, can't go wrong with that. One. I eyeballed it. So while that is going, I have two and a half cups of flour. I'm gonna add in my baking soda, which is two teaspoons of baking soda. And then all of my warm spices, cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg, about two. Well, no, I said two teaspoons of baking soda, I hope. Two teaspoons of baking soda, two tablespoons. I probably added a little bit more of cinnamon in it. Uh, about a half a teaspoon of ginger and about a quarter of nutmeg. 
Those are some very nice, warm. Oops, I forgot I should have got another spatula out. Just gonna mix that in a little bit, and I do have some salt. All right. Just wanna make just wanna really make sure I add everything. Since this, since this is my third time making this cake, I don't know, about a half a teaspoon, no, about a quarter, maybe a half a teaspoon of salt. Yeah, I think that should be enough. Just make sure all this is mixed in. There you go. I'm just gonna, I forgot I already had this in the batter. Just make sure that's all. Okay, we're just gonna slowly add in the flour. I forgot to tell you, because I'm just remembering what to do here. I'm gonna add in a little bit of the flour. I have about three quarter cup of buttermilk. I'm gonna add in half of the buttermilk. that going in there. Then I'm going to add in a little bit more flour. About a third of it. This will be yeah, another third. Then I'm going to add in the rest of the buttermilk. Make sure all this is okay. Just gonna make sure it's scraped down from the sides again before I add this last part of the flour. Sometimes I don't think the beater gets down to the very bottom of your mixing bowl, so I just wanted to make sure. Okay. I guess that wasn't very slow, but it's the last third. So we're just gonna mix that up until it's just combined and then we'll fold in our carrots and our um, raisins. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are enjoying it and I would really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to it. And oh, don't forget to click that little bell up there and you'll be notified of future videos that are new and coming on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for that. And I would really appreciate it if you shared the video and let other people know and encourage them to subscribe and like the videos as well. So anyway, thank you and back to the video. Okay, I went ahead and uh, greased and floured my cake pans. Now I'm going to just hopefully fold in my carrots. I'm only going to do about, I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to start off with two cups. Because there's three cups in here. Okay, I think that's about two cups. And I'm going to see if that's enough for me. I'm just going to try and fold this in. Because, I mean, it is carrot cake. You want carrots in it. Try and get the bottom. Get some of this below. There you go. I'm gonna try and not over mix it.
I'm gonna add in a little bit more. So it's not quite three cups. I think that'll be enough. Lord willing. Then I'm gonna add in my half a cup of golden raisins. And I just wanted a sprinkling of raisins. I didn't want each slice of cake to be, you know, just raisins and carrot. I mean, you do want to taste a little bit of the cake. Okay, I'm hoping I did not overmix this. I'll try and add half the batter there. See how I'm scraping down the bowl? I'm gonna spread this out. I need a little more here. Like I said, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's baking with my mom or what, but I like to get every little bit. And I'm sure some people may feel like they need to put nuts in here and you can. I wouldn't drown it with nuts, but pecans, I think are really good if you wanna put nuts in a cake. If not, I save that for the frosting. And I know some people who have put pineapple in their carrot cake. I don't know, I just choose not to. I'm gonna try and smooth this out as best I can. A little bit there. And that is pretty much the last of the cake. Okay, 300, I have an oven uh, preheated at 350 degrees. And we are going to put this in, how long, how long? I would say, most likely it's gonna be about 30 minutes, but I would check it at 25, just to see what your oven's doing. And then if you need to go a little bit longer, go a little bit longer, but test it with uh, like a toothpick and if it comes out kind of moist, but not wet and too clingy, I think you've got a cake. So I'm gonna tap this, just um, tap this a little bit on the counter. Just make sure I get the air pockets out. I think we're ready, set to go. So 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. I'd check it at 25, but if you need a little bit more time, do it. So I will, so I will see you back in my little kitchen in about 30 minutes, okay? All right. Okay, I'm gonna get ready to make the cream cheese frosting for what I hope is a very good and luscious carrot cake. I just pulled it out of the oven, so I'm gonna obviously let it cool for a little bit um, before I frost it, but because of the dark, warm spices, ooh, it smells good. <laughs> So let us get going on the cream cheese. What I've got going on here is about a half a cup of butter. I have, I think, let me go to my notes. I'm so paranoid on this cake because the first time, oh my gosh, or the second time, anyway, I have about a third cup of brown sugar. I thought with the carrot cake and it being kind of that warm spices, um, not a rustic cake, I think having the um, 
brown sugar would really be great. So I'm gonna mix in the butter, the one third cup of brown sugar, the cream cheese, two packages, so eight ounces each of cream cheese. Well, it's gonna be a layered cake, so I need a lot. A splash of vanilla. And I've got seven cups of powdered sugar. Let's see if we need all of that. And to tell you the truth, I'm not sure why I'm not using my mixer, but a hand mixer. Maybe because I didn't clean it up yet from the cake. <laughs> So we're gonna whip this up. I love this hand mixer because it's pretty powerful and has a lot of speed. There we go. I'm gonna blend this up till it's nice and fluffy before I start adding in the powdered sugar. Talk about arm muscles. Probably because this is up so high. Okay, I'm gonna start adding in the powdered sugar. This does feel a little thick, so hopefully it won't be too thick because I think sometimes with too thick of frosting, once you start smearing it, um, it can kind of, you know, tear the cake. So we'll see. Maybe I'll add in a little bit more uh, butter or a little bit of milk to just loosen it up a little bit, but we'll see. So here's the first cup. I'm gonna add a second cup. It's getting smooth. Then I'm gonna keep continuing to add a cup at a time just to see how the frosting will go. But if I need to, which I think I'm gonna have to, is maybe a tablespoon of uh, cream or half and half or melt just to kind of break it up just a little bit okay well obviously I have changed I'm Amy in my little kitchen I had to take a break and stop finish stop to be able to finish up this cake because I had to go film uh, we're in our final filming for this season for little people big world anyway uh, so I took the cake out of the oven nice you know with some of the warm spices it you know turns the cake into a nice golden you know color so I'm really excited about it I think it turned out great it feels good it feels firm not too um, soft or light that it's not going to be able to you know hold up to the frosting I went ahead and made the cream cheese frosting uh, two eight ounce things of cream cheese, seven cups of uh, um, powdered sugar, a half a cup of butter, a third of a cup of brown sugar, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of salt, and I think that's about it. But always go to amyroloffslittlekitchen.com or go to the YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen YouTube channel to find this recipe and the video. And that way the recipe could be more accurate than the video because sometimes I forget what I'm doing. Anyway, this is a one man, this is a one woman show. <laughs> so let's start frosting. Okay, I'm just gonna put a glob on here. I think this will be the easy part. Oh yeah, I like how the cake is holding up to it. So we're just gonna smooth it, make sure it's all even. And the one thing I like about this cake is that there is no little um, cone or little crest to the cake where you have to slice it off in order to have kind of like a nice leveled cake. So I'm really liking that. Just smooth it out. I think this was good cream cheese frosting. Okay, let's try and get the top part of it. 
I probably should have a plate, but I'm gonna see if I can do this on my hand. Oh yeah, there we go. I think I'm gonna do this. Geez, I hope I have enough frosting. I wanted to, I wanted to make sure I had that one little spot. You know, you want every little piece of the cake to taste wonderful. I think I'm just gonna add just a little bit around the edges here. Okay. Oh dear. Okay. I think that's it. Oh dear. Yeah, I think that's good. Okay. Then I'm gonna use this handy tool or there's a lot of other tools you can use too. Like I said, I'm not a full-fledged baker, but I'm giving it my best shot. I'm just gonna put a glob on here. And if some of it rolls off the edge, that's okay too, because it's gonna go down the side. Isn't the, the newest thing in a cake, the um, bear frosting or whatever they call it? Tell the truth, I'm really surprised at how level this cake is. Okay, let's try and do some of the sides. I'm gonna use this handy little tool. Let's get this out of the way. In fact, I might even have some frosting left over. I don't know. How can you have frosting left over? edges isn't, my edges aren't quite, because I thought this was good frosting. I think it's going to be okay. This is such an art. I'm going to try and do little swirls when I'm all done. Kind of fancy it up. Hmm. You guys tell me how I'm doing. And what I did too, I debated whether to add pecans to this. So I chopped up kind of fine, not too fine, but kind of fine and toasted pecans. So I will just sprinkle a little bit on here. To me, if you can see any of the cake, unless you want, what is that term called? like bear cake, bear frosting cake, or something like that, then, but if you, if you want frosting on your cake, and to me, if you see any bear spots, uh, you didn't frost it enough. Well, I definitely have a little bit of frosting left over, so 
I could probably back off a little bit on some of it, or maybe I should have added a little bit more in between the cake. I'm always so afraid that I'm gonna run out of frosting. I mean, crazy. I'm a big fan of the saying, you know, if you have your cake, be happy. But boy, I tell you, if you have your frosting in life, it does make it a little bit sweeter. But if I have my cake, I'm happy. Okay, let's just, I don't know, I'm gonna try and make some swirls. Let's just put it this way. I have not sliced into the cake yet. I am hoping this holds up. You know, as I make this cake, I wonder, because I'm getting married in August, I wonder what kind of flavor cake Chris and I will have. That would be kind of fun, huh? good. You guys think that's good? This is Carrot Cake in Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. So from my little kitchen to yours, I hope you continue to enjoy gathering around the table. So let's just sprinkle. I, I want to make sure I'm, I think I'm done. Got a lot of frosting left over. Oops. Let's just sprinkle on a little bit of pecans. And you know what? You don't have to do the pecans. If you want, great. If not, that's fine too. We're gonna to sprinkle a little bit on. Okay, carrot cake, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. You can find this recipe on my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen or at amyroloffslittlekitchen.com. Thank you for joining me and watching the video. I so appreciate you guys following me on my little kitchen. So this is carrot cake from my little kitchen to yours. Enjoy. Okay, so I think the big test is right now. I got done frosting the carrot cake. I sprinkled on some toasted pecans. Let's see how it holds up. I'm so excited. I always think the first piece of cake is always the hardest. Ooh. Boy, it is definitely moist, that is for sure. Okay, I'm gonna do another one. This'll be for Chris. Do you see it? I think it's luscious. Okay. Okay, this one came out a little crumbly just because it is so, so moist. So let's see how Chris thinks it is. Okay, I had to have Chris join me. She had to. I did, I did. So this is carrot cake and um, I think this is my third attempt. So let me know what you think. Keep trying, I always say. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's good. It's nice and moist. Yeah. Mm. It's moist. Fish regardless. <laughs> mm. Wow. You like it? It is moist. 
Love your frosting too, but yeah, the cake is very moist. Lots of flavor, a lot of a lot of extra interesting flavors going on with it. So. Well, I have cinnamon, ginger, and nutmeg. Do mm. you think there's any too much of something? Mm -mm. Okay. I really like the frosting because it wasn't too sweet mm. at all, I don't think, either. No, good job. Unless you just wanted to taste just that. I think it's one of your best. I like all the walnuts on top, too. I do, too, because it adds a little crunch. Uh -huh. And I wanted the walnuts on top and not in the cake, mm -hmm. you know? And they're toasted. No. Wow. They're just not walnuts or pecans. Good job, hon. Very good. Okay, good. Well, it's good stuff. But there's always you know, room for perfection. You may want to do another one or two or five or six. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. You know I can. So from my little kitchen to yours, I hope you give this uh, carrot cake a try. Let me know your thoughts. But you can um, find this recipe and this video and all the other recipes and videos over on my YouTube channel, amyroloffslittlekitchen.com, or you can go to the website at amyroloffslittlekitchen.com. Either way, the video, the recipes are there. So again, my little kitchen to yours. Enjoy gathering. Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. Thank you.